Well hello YouTube and greetings from Texas. A little warning from your friend Clint here. So many things in Texas are sometimes other than what they seem, so I'm just going to give you a little heads up about a few things. I'm asking you to forgive my appearance. I'm all covered in dirt and I smell quite a bit like a rat snake musk. But uh, if you're like I am and you live in Texas, and who's to say that you don't and that you're not, you probably went to the feed store and you fell in love with chickens. And so you had to buy some, not just one, you had to buy all 21. I did. And uh, man, I love those things, but they are a pain in the butt. So I'm going to warn you straight up, don't fall in love with the chickens, don't go chicken happy. I've done it for all of us, I've made the mistake, I'm making my confession so you don't have to follow in the same path I did. Because here's the problem, you see, because what happens is they start laying these things, these things we call eggs, and I don't know man, if you got this cheap part of you inside of you like me, there's something about getting these free eggs that just makes even all the mess that a chicken makes somehow or another worth it. But see, it's all an illusion. It's in your mind. It's like a drug that's controlling you. It's not reality. It's just something that happens when you're around chickens. I can't explain it, but if you bought a chicken, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you go to collecting these things, but there's only one problem. All of a sudden, one week, six of them come up missing, and a couple of your little chicklets come up missing. What's happened? The grand mystery. Where have things gone? We know things don't disappear, so something has to have gone somewhere. Where did it go? You start looking around and guess what you find? That's right. You find a snake. Not just any snake. You find a big snake. And suddenly the mystery is solved. You know exactly where the eggs went. You know exactly where the chickens went. So I'm going to open this up and show you why you need to be careful in Texas. Not only are there scorpions everywhere, so if you put your hand you could get stung. But there's also snakes, so if you put your hand down you could get bit. Now fortunately this snake is a rat snake, it is not poisonous, but I'm going to show you why wearing protective equipment is still not a bad idea. If you watch this snake, and I'll see if I can demonstrate it, he'll start tracking my hand. If I put it up here, get any heat near him, he'll start tracking. Because he'll go straight for the heat, and he will strike and he will bite. I'll just give you a little for instance. Let's see if I can get him to track a little here. Come on now, wake up. There we go. Come on, come on now. Okay, he's coming back around now. He's puffing up a little bit. Okay, he sprayed out a little bit of his nice, wonderful scent, so I'll learn not to touch him. He'll probably start hissing him, and now there we go, he's going to track. And he's going to start striking, you see his head going down, you see that tongue coming out. He's concentrating, and if I move my hand over here, he'll, he'll sense it, and if I'm not careful, he'll get me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be real careful. I've picked up a lot of snakes, I've handled a lot of snakes, and I'm going to show you why you had to be careful. I'm going to let him strike the glove so you'll get an idea that this thing can get you if he wants to. Well, now he's not going to do it, but he's been striking at me all day. He bit me several times. He probably reached around and bite my arm. He doesn't see the heat because of the glove. But he does love to strike. At any rate, the reason you know that this isn't a copperhead or a rattlesnake or one of the other venomous snakes in Texas is because, as you can see, it's way too long. If this was a rattlesnake, if this was a copperhead, or if this was a water moccasin, it wouldn't be anywhere near this long. They are fat snakes, short, fat snakes. You can also see that the head is not quite right. It has more of the pencil head than it has the big, thick, you know, head that a rattlesnake has. Now, even so, if you look at the pattern, this pattern is pretty similar to an eastern diamondback rattler, so it can easily be confused. Anytime, if you just saw only this part of the snake right here, you should uh, be alarmed. And once you see the head, you'll see that it is just, in fact, nothing but a rat snake. Now, the cool thing is, is that every country has its version of the rat snake. Every country has a version. And some of these are really beautiful. Now, if you love snakes like I do, they're all beautiful. This one's not particularly, and I hope I doesn't hurt his feelings by saying he's probably going to bite me now if I said he wasn't quite so pretty. But the truth is, some of them are absolutely gorgeous, blues and things of that nature. Most of them don't get to this size. This one can get up to eight foot, so he is 
it can get fairly large. Again, I'm going to just try and keep him away from me a little bit because he is pretty aggressive. Pretty aggressive. I'm getting sprayed with all sorts of musk and I smell really funky, I'll guarantee you. Now, if you're going to free handle snakes Pentecostal style, you need to know the right way to handle them. You need to make sure you know how to put one down because it's like getting a tiger by the tail. If you get it wrong, you will get bit. And it's not a question of if, it's only a matter of when. It will happen. It's happened to me. It will happen to you. So do not pick up snakes if you do not know what you're doing. You know, I don't recommend it to anyone. I do it because I've done it forever. I've done it since I was a child. I grew up on a farm. They were everywhere. I didn't have a choice. You handled snakes or you got bit. So at any rate, you can see what a nice example this is. These actually serve a great purpose. They keep rodents at bay. They keep all of the environment in check. And if there's ever an argument for evolution, I'm not sure whether there is or isn't, one might possibly start with something as simple as the diversity of rat snakes and their presence everywhere and argue possibly uh, from that position that, you know, uh, things had changed somewhat. If, if, if the rat snake, you know, descended from one archetype, then it would, you know, stand to reason that possibly this amount of diversity would suggest that some form of evolution has taken place, some sort of diversity. Anyway, I think he's going to open his mouth for us here. Let's see if I can get him to open that mouth. Let's see if I can get him to strike a little. He likes to, likes to get a little bit aggressive. Let's see if he'll go for a strike here. Yeah, he's tracking now. See him tracking? Uh-huh. Coil up in that S figure. You're thinking about it already, aren't you? You know you are. You're thinking about it. But I ain't gonna let it happen because you are just too mean. You were sure striking earlier because I got the marks to prove it. And anyway, so when you go picking things up, make sure you know what you're doing. And uh, y'all have a wonderful evening.